On today's show, former Big Brother star and bride-to-be Grace Adams Short on a quest for her perfect wedding dress. But I'd look like a real virgin, look! don't I? <laughs> Plus, Wish You Were Here host Ruth England on her recent marriage to American officer Mike Hawke. The dress itself, it was sort of creamy ivory. I don't want to go white, white. I mean, let's face it, I was knocked up. <laughs> <laughs> My first impression of Mike, it was like he was this big, tall, good-looking scouser <laughs> with a big, big, big grin. In the house, we kind of, because we were together all the time, we obviously had this very close bond. And then, you know, normally when you start seeing someone, you might see them a couple of times a week. We didn't go through that because we couldn't pick and choose when we saw each other. We were literally living with each other for a month. Hence, people say, oh, gosh, you got engaged really fast. But for us, it just felt normal because we'd been living together for like a month. And then after we came out of the house, we were still inseparable. Um, we were living together for like four, four months and then it was after that that we got engaged. So yes, the big question is the wedding dress. Everyone's eyes will be on, you know, be on me, which is quite scary. I've kind of got an idea what I want and what I don't want, but kind of open to suggestions, if you know what I mean. That's why I'm kind of looking forward to later going and having a look at all the dresses. I'll be like a child in a sweet shop, just running around, pilling big dresses and putting them on. Um, the designers will have a fit going, I hope your fingers are clean, <laughs> like a grubby little child. Because I'm young, I'll be 22 when I get married, so I want something that's going to reflect my personality. So something a bit sassy but sexy as well. So I want like very figure hugging and then when it gets to that here, I want it to kind of go out a little bit, but not like a blonde shape, just kind of that shape. And then I want a really long train at the back. I want that one right now. Hi. Hi. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting nice to meet you. Hi. Grace. Yes. I'm yeah. Chenka. Hi, Chenka. Okay. Nice to meet you. Can I take your coat for you? Yes, yes, yes. Wow. We were just describing what my little wedding dress I would adore, and yes. we just pulled Seriously. up, and I saw that. I was like, yes. Well, when I came out of the house, obviously, I was the bitch, um, and I was kind of, because I came out before Mikey, I was like, oh, gosh, imagine if he comes out and he sees all this, and he's like, don't want to go near her, because, you know, she's, she was the baddie type thing, wow. but he 100% stood by me and was like, well, I don't get where this is coming from, because obviously he had a totally different perception of me to what <clears throat> the public was. We thought when I came out, like, oh, people would be chucking blooming tomatoes at me in the street, but it's not, it's not like that at all. It, and especially now after winning the circus, um, it's been a real turnaround for me. Grace, would you like to come through to the dressing room? We'll start trying some on. I yeah. think I would, I think <laughs> definitely. You don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> come on, let's get in here. The proposal was completely, like, didn't expect it to happen at all. We were in a shop and there was this ring and I absolutely adored it. I was like, I love it, you know, and I was like, that's the one, that's the one. And I was like, just get it now and just, you know, keep it and then just surprise me with it like this. And he was going, no, I'm not going to get it now because you might change your mind. I was like, no, I'm not going to change my mind. I know that's the ring I want. Like, get that ring. <laughs> Literally forcing him to buy the engagement ring. And he was like, no, I'm not doing it, babe. There's absolutely not, like, you're not going to get it now because you might change your mind. We don't even know when we are going to, you know. So um, I was, like, in a half the whole way home. And um, then I think I had work to or something to go to before, like, a couple of hours. So did that, and then we were going for dinner to Mirabelle's in Piccadilly. After dinner, he was like, so it was, like, before coffee and dessert, I think it was, actually. And he was like, do you need to go to the toilet? And I was like... I got something in my teeth or something. I was thinking, oh my God, what's going on? You know, why are you telling me to go to the toilet? So I was, kind of took the hint. I went, actually, yeah, maybe I will just look to the loo like this. Totted off to the toilet, looked in the mirror. I was like going, checking my teeth. I was like, is there anything in there? No. Came back out and then sat down. There was a pebble on the table that had um, inscribed, like gra engraved on it, marry me, like with a question mark. And I was like, of course, yes. You know, it was like absolutely gushing. He was like, you know, said the old, you know, the best thing that ever happened to me. And then he lifted up the napkin and there was the box and I, he, like, opened the box up and um, the ring was in there. I screamed, I like the ring more than the pebble. Right, Grace, now let's look at this one. This is more a vintage look, so this is a fabulously, you know, beaded lace. Oh, that's <laughs> And we've sort of given it a sort of a camp name, Zeta. Right. So more film star-ish. <laughs> mind what Mikey would like. My mum would like this one. <laughs> So let's just do this. Now, do you have you thought about wearing it over your face? Are you going to be the blushing bride? I think I will. Oh, fabulous. All right. Why not? Absolutely. So let me just do this. <laughs> let me dress this up. And then let me just put something in front for you. I feel like a little girl playing dress up. <laughs> that's what well, that's what it's like here. It is like being in your mother's wardrobe and dressing yeah. up. 
Do you see what I mean? So that that could be your entrance. I'm going to yeah. do the scary thing now. Okay, All go. right. But look how pretty. God, I look like a real virgin, look! don't I? <laughs> look how pretty is that? Get somebody you can trust to do this. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because you want to be looking beautiful for the whole ceremony. Okay. Wow. All right, darling. Let's try another one. Okay. Okay. Okay, Grace. So this is the dress you saw in the window. Yeah. Gut reaction. You said you loved it. Yeah? I did. I did. So now we popped it on, darling. What do you think? I absolutely adore it. The other thing is, have you? Do you know how long a train you want? Because we can even go longer than long. this. Long. Well, then we can make it longer and then put some twinkle on it and some Swarovski crystals, and then right. that'll be gobsmackingly gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we've got to another designer to see you later. So, um, but I have to say, he's going to have to pull it out of the bag because uh, this is, this is kind of like me with my dream dress. So, uh, yeah, interesting. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? I'm quite excited. OK, Grace, so now I've done the costings for you. Great. So you know that. And yeah. just to let you know that the dress is made for you. So okay. we measure you and it's made for you. Thanks. So and seriously, you. if you want to come back, I'd love to see you again. I will. I'm, but, I'm back. Know, you never know. All so right, thank really, you. So much. No, it was fab meeting Take you. Take care. I hope I helped. Oh, and there's the dress. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a sec, I'll just let you out. I'm just going to take it with me. <laughs> see you soon. See you later. later. Right. Bye. Bye-bye. We've just bought a house together in London. We've just bought another place in Liverpool together. So we've got the old DIY on the cards as well as organising a wedding. I mean, how many stressful things do I want to plan in one year? Um, so, yeah, career, enjoying each, each other, enjoying life and lots of holidays and DIY <laughs> in the plan so far. And when that's all said and done, then there'll be kids arriving, definitely. Hi, Hi, Grace. You okay? I'm very well. How are you? I'm okay. Mm, lovely to see you. Very exciting. Yes, please come through. Thank you. You can design your beautiful dress oh today. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited, Eric. Very well, excited. you know, at Eric Way we can make anything possible. Yes. <laughs> you're so beautiful we don't have to try hard. <laughs> okay, so, big day for you. Yes. Um, need to do something really special, obviously. Mm. Um, it's one of those days that you need to remember for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think the dress plays such an important part in, in this whole um, occasion. So um, I'm going to start off by asking you what um, sort of silhouette you were thinking of having for your wedding dress. I like the um, mermaid, is it called? Oh, the, like, yes. Like that. Which I think you'd look fabulous. I really like that because I like it being figure hugging okay. because obviously like I'm young no I want it quite sexy quite okay. sassy okay so I like it sort of but then I like the way that it just comes out at the bottom so okay. that's you know so it kind of goes like that and then goes so like that. So it's slightly sort of a Diana Ross diva kind of. Yeah look, kind yeah. of like yeah. Okay fantastic. Yeah that kind of shape. Shall we go and have a look at some of the fabulous dresses? And some of the fabulous dresses yes definitely. Okay. Come through. Hmm. Now Ooh. Yes, two of them. Now, these dresses are from our semi-couture collection. Okay. So, um, nothing like what we'll be designing for you. But what is really quite good about this, this has that sort of mermaid look. Yeah. So, we could get a slight sort of idea of the, the kick out to the bottom and the mm. shape around your waist and stuff. And then, of course, the dress which I will really want to show you is one that I've just designed for a client of mine. Um, let me just hook these back. Now, this is quite similar um, maybe not in fabric, but in the style. Um, her dress was fully beaded in crystal. That yeah. is absolutely amazing. It's fantastic because I, I think it yeah. works so well and it will work really well for your shape as well. Yeah. You know, having it really fitted around the bust, yeah. over the hips, and then just kicking out to the bottom. Yeah, because this is just, the shape, wasn't it, that we were yeah, talking about? That this we... is exactly that shape. Okay, Dokes. Well, let me get you into one of the dresses. Okay, if you step in here for okay. me. Okay. And then I just shout when you're ready and okay. I'll just pass the dress through. Fabulous. There you go. I like this one. This wow. is so pretty. Really pretty. That's amazing. It's the shape, though, isn't it, that we like, we mm, said that we like. It really well because once we cut it really nice and tight. Yeah. Against the figure. It's really pretty. And then once again at the bottom, if it kicks out really nicely. Yeah. Then you have that, the wide yeah. shape at the bottom. Definitely. Oh. This is so pretty, the shape though. It's Lovely. Really Completely pretty. Completely different yeah. you know, to what we've sort of designed for you. But I think it's quite nice for you to see an option. Yeah, um, I like the, the train, you know? Yeah, it's nice. 
It's a good fit. I could just walk down the aisle right now. You could absolutely run for it. <laughs> <laughs> I could get you a taxi. <laughs> really pretty, mm. really pretty. So when I went to Ritva, the dresses were like, they were stunning. They were really, really pretty, really classy. Um, and there was one in the window that I absolutely adored, and I thought, okay, that's the, like, the dress, you know, out of all of them. But now, coming away from it and looking back on it, I don't think that is the one, the one. It's kind of second to the one. I think, even though I haven't even seen the one that Eric's going to be doing me, because obviously it's just pencil and paper at the moment, but just how it sounds. And it sounds sexy how I wanted it, and it sounds sassy, and it's got a little bit more bling than the other one, because it is a special occasion, so you're only going to do it once, so you might as well go full on. It ticks all the boxes. That's why I said exactly the other one. I'm going to sound like such a two-faced person going, I really like that one, I really like that one. But no, this one, couture, sounds fierce. Still to come on Celebrity Brides Unveiled, celebrity hairdresser Richard Ward gives us the lowdown on his star-studded client list. Plus, Ruth England talks love and marriage. And I could just hear my mother thinking, oh, God, she's hooked up with Rambo. This salon here that we're in now is, is, is our third salon. This has to be an experience for people to come. We get an awful lot of people coming from out of London. We get lucky enough to get a lot of press. I do a lot of TV. But I wanted it is to be a place that they, if they're going to come all this way, they need to walk into here feeling that this is so different from where they've ever been. But at the same point, it cannot be intimidating. Well, this is my favourite room in the whole salon. This is what we call the bar and the waiting area. I think this is probably the room that I'm most proud of in the new salon, because what is unique about this is that we have a fully licensed bar, and you can come in and you can have lunch in here. Oh, so how's the loose running going? What's going on now? Really good. Yeah. I've been offered the job. Yeah, me and Jackie. What? Yeah, what, me and... Time? Yeah. The amount of celebrities we get in here is, I mean, we is, is, is second to none. Everybody from royalty, um, you know, Kate Middleton, uh, Sophie Wessex. I mean, the big thing for us was being lucky enough to, to break in with Trini and Susanna when Trini and Susanna first became famous and I started doing all the hair on the show. And then we got on the back of Big Brother and I started to do Chantal and people like that. In fact, I did Chantal's hair for a wedding, actually. Um, and then it sort of it sort of grows really. My signature design has, has evolved again over over the 15 years. I mean, you don't start off knowing what your signature design is, but I know what it is now, and I think that makes me feel very accomplished. It's about changing people. Um, that's why I do so many makeovers. That's why I do a lot of these different shows, and the Trini and Susanna show, and you know my regular slot on GMTV and things like that. And it's because I think. I'm very good at seeing a face and knowing what to do with it and changing someone for the better. This is a, one of my favourite rooms. The great thing about this room is, is that every single one of these wash basins and the chairs, you lie down flat, which is very, very easy on your neck, where a lot of hairdressers get a terrible pain in your neck. So everyone that's having anything to do with washing comes into this zone here, the shampoo zone. So once you've had your hair washed, you come into any one of our two cutting zones and there we have our kitchen where we cook all the food for the clients. It's a bit different when you're doing a celebrity wedding because you know that um, nine times out of ten they, that they are going to be photographed all day long wherever they go. If I was to design any celebrity's hair for their wedding, I think I'd probably be shot for this because she's so popular anyway, but it would have to be Kate Moss. I could see her getting married in some sort of gypsy type sort of wedding gown. It won't be a big meringue or it won't be a sort of Catherine Walker number. And I should think, funny enough, the hair wouldn't actually be that taxing to do at all. But it's just the thought of actually doing her and, you know, I mean, I think if Kate Moss were to get married, you know, if to be linked with doing her hair as a hairdresser, I think people would see that you've got, you're pretty much at the top of your field, wouldn't they? When I was young, I didn't really have any romantic aspirations. All I wanted to do was travel the world. And I kind of thought by about 28, I would be just magically married with children. 
Um, and it took quite a, quite a bit longer than that for it to happen. The way Ruth and I met, as I recall, as I was just come off of two years on active duty in the Army after 9-11, and I was working as head of security and the chief medical officer for this reality TV show down in Jamaica. And of course, you know, I'm responsible for the crew and the cast and the host, hostess. So I was expecting a big royal pain in the butt. And then the first time I saw her, she was walking down the little pathway there in our little tropical setup, smelling the flowers, bouncing around, and somehow or another she knew my name and she said, Hi, Hawk. And I gotta say, I just got all squishy inside. And that's what I recall from the first time that I met her. I have no recollection of that at all. <laughs> we kind of got it together one night after, um, after a drinking competition. 17 tequilas. Mm -hmm. I won. Well, as I recall the story, <laughs> um, Ruth, you know, she can drink with the best of them. I'm not a big drinker. And I think she was trying to test my mettle, so. We started off drinking some tequilas, and she kept ordering more and ordering more. And before you know <laughs> it, there were 17 tequila glasses per person up on the deck. I like to think, though, that he wooed me, um, mm. which is kind of traditional. I mean, the gentleman is supposed to woo the lady. Yet, um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really a traditional, traditional girl. I mean, I, I don't do the kind of diamonds and flowers. Though I do love flowers. Um, I don't need fancy meals. I've got um, pet turtles at home. And so Mike would woo me <laughs> by bringing me lizards, bring me little lizards, and he'd put them to walk across my shoulders. And then he'd bring me, he'd catch me tiny little frogs and bring them round to me, and big hairy caterpillars. And he'd always be carrying this huge machete so he could hack his way through the jungle. And um, he'd uh, knock on the door, brandishing this machete, with a little tiny hairy caterpillar on it, just for me. <laughs> I think the real uh, wooing aspect was um, me being the head guy of security and letting her break a few rules here and there and get away with some things, and that's when she was like, mm -hmm. It was the lizards, so did it. We were a pair of freaks. <laughs> I knew within a month of meeting him that he was the man I wanted to marry and spend the rest of my life with. But, um, you, you know, you've got to kind of play the game a bit, because I wasn't entirely sure, because he was being a little bit reticent, a little bit more mm. grown up about things. Mm. Um, <laughs> I mean, one drunken <laughs> night, I blubbed out, I love you! And then he was very, like, Sort of, um, <laughs> he didn't reciprocate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall that. Hmm. Oh, really not. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was after six months he kind of intimated to me that um, he wanted to marry me, and I was just in seventh heaven. It's quite funny when I first told my mum and dad about Mike. Um, I'd been away for four months at this point, been away from home. And I'd been given this instruction by my mother before I left, don't you hook up with anybody. And mm. um, she knew the show had finished a month previously. And she just wanted to know where I was. I'd kind of disappeared off the radar and they were a bit concerned. Mm. And I phoned up and I said, um, I've kind of fallen for somebody. Pause on the end of the phone. Um, he's not British, longer pause. Um, he's American. And then. My mum said, so what does he do? Mm. 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 And I had to say, well, he's just come back from Afghanistan. He's, um, he's in the US military, special forces, operative. Yeah, well, that's what he does. Again, massive pause. Where does he live? Well, he hasn't actually got a home at the moment because he's used to fighting all over the world. And I could just hear my mother thinking, oh, God, she's hooked up with Rambo. Well, the proposal wasn't conventional either because um, Mike had just been working out in Mexico and I'd gone out to join him. And on Mexican Independence Day, we think, <laughs> <laughs> we conceived our son. And we'd decided that, we'd already thought we were going to marry perhaps the following year. Um, but then something else happened which sort of accelerated everything. Mm. I was pregnant and it looked like Mike was having to go to Iraq and so we thought we've got to get this sorted quickly because, you know, it's a serious situation. The actual proposal, I was pregnant. I, would, I had just dreadful morning sickness. I also had flu. Mike also had flu. And he, just, he said to me, come up to the roof terrace, just come up to the roof terrace. And I thought, oh, God, this is the last thing I want. And he said to me, my life's just about perfect at the moment. I'm with a beautiful woman and she's having my baby and it couldn't get better. 
apart from perhaps if you'd marry me. And he pretended to drop something on the floor and he knelt down in a puddle on the roof terrace and proposed to me and it was, mm. it was beautiful. And it was so difficult organising the logistics because I was marrying a foreign national, mm. the laws had changed, we were both travelling, I was in Egypt, he was in the States mm. and we were trying to get the documentation together and the visas kept being rejected and it was just a nightmare. The window of time before he was going to Iraq was shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. We were trying to get it organised and so we decided we'd have a really small wedding because it just might not happen. I bought a dress, it was sort of creamy ivory with little sort of um, leaf emblems on it. Um, I didn't want to go white white, I mean let's face it, I was knocked up. <laughs> <laughs> we worked out that if we couldn't get married here, we could do it in the US within 10 days. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't invite any friends or family because it just might not happen. It ended up being it basically hell. whoever could walk into the chapel, that's who was coming to the wedding. And it was Christmas time and I had some, some family were down <sighs> for Christmas. And so the wedding itself, I mean, mm. the place we chose was beautiful. Mm. But we had to set it up, so if the wedding didn't happen, if we couldn't get the documentation in time, it would just be a family Christmas dinner. But the actual wedding day itself was just a, a beautiful, perfect day. It was wonderful. We did it in a hotel. For me, it was cool being a military guy because it's where Oliver Cromwell stayed the night before the last battle that ended you know, that war, which is a big factor for us as an American. Um, I did it because it was near my parents' home. It was in the Cotswolds. Which she loves. And Ligon it, Arms. Just beautiful. The day was perfect in every respect. And then at night, after everything was over and everybody was sitting around the fireplace drinking and talking, there was a nice, beautiful snowfall Snow. that came down. And it just, it was an amazing day. We have the most beautiful little frog in the world. <laughs> <laughs> He's got such attitude. I think that comes from his daddy. Um, right. But it, it's, 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 made, it's made my life complete, the pair of them, having a family, our family. I think the secret to our successful marriage thus far is... See the way he's looking at me? I'm waiting <laughs> to hear this one. <laughs> communication is key. I think that's yeah. down to everybody. Mm. Um, you have to be able to communicate. For us personally, it is timetabling free time mm. as if it were work. You have to timetable time together in the same country and um, a damn good sex life and mm. true love. Next time on Celebrity Brides Unveiled, Brookside actress Sue Jenkins and the success story behind her long marriage. It's wanting to make it work and feeling that it's precious enough to make it stand the test of time. Plus, cult icon Debbie McGee on her first impression of husband Paul Daniels. Oh, God, I hate magicians.